uh, from Mobius. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to talk about my journey in to uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, when I was a young boy, I'm always fascinated about AI uh, uh, because I, I, I watch a lot of movies and they're always very cool robot that can talk to me, uh, that act like me. So to create something that have such capability uh, is my dream. And uh, I think deeply in our blood, uh, uh, to create something more powerful uh, is, is truly in our blood. And when I thought about uh, com uh, artificial intelligence, uh, I think I thought it was easy because how, how hard for you to think, right? Uh, so very natural. Uh, but well, uh, but, but if, uh, and given the fact, the fact that the computer uh, computer has has. Um, there are uh, a lot of uh, advancement in computation, for example. Uh, CPU and GPU get faster and faster, and we basically have infinite amount of computation power uh, in the cloud. Uh, so my question is, it is 2015, where is my cool robot? Um, next slide. So well, uh, when I look deeper into this problem, uh, immediately, I, find, I found out that the problem is actually very hard because the, there's no clear definition of intelligence. So the whole problem of creating something that intelligent is what, uh, very uh, you opposed. Uh, but the, real, re the realization of that, the fact that the journey is actually longer than expected doesn't taunt me. Uh, because even the whole problem is very hard to tackle. Uh, maybe the first step, uh, which is perception, can be solved. For example, uh, face recognition and object recognition, which is the first step in perception, uh, is more well defined, for example. Uh, face recognition, the input is raw pixels, and output is name of a person. Uh, and for object recognition, the input is raw pixels, and the output is uh, location and the name of the object. So that's why I found Obvious uh, to advance in computer vision technologies. Uh, Obvious is a, a company that uh, have this open API that anyone can integrate uh, to their uh, applications through our uh, RESTful APIs. Uh, we have integrated many technologies inside that platform, for example, uh, face, face recognition, uh, concept recognition, and uh, uh, later on, o OCR. And people ask me why I pause my PhD program to, in the pursuit of computer vision research. Um, my philosophy is uh, 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 to create something really works in the real world, uh, we need real data. And we can't get that in the lab environment. Um, so so uh, I paused my PhD and uh, found OBS with my uh, team and create something that anybody can use. And uh, we build this in the hope that uh, if more people, uh, if there's, uh, there are more people using our platform, our platform will get smarter and smarter because we see more and more images and videos. Uh, at OBS, we adopt this uh, what we call continuous integration of training. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the term, uh, continuous integration is a, is a practice that's widely used by uh, software, develop, uh, software companies uh, like Google and Facebook, uh, where new features, bug, bug fixes, are checked into uh, product services uh, in real time. There's no downtime. Uh, and they do this in a really fast iteration so that any bugs uh, and, or new features will be integrated into this uh, their service in a, in a timely manner uh, to, to improve user experience. Uh, and since at first we, uh, there's no oracle telling us what to train on, uh, where, the data, uh, where the training set are from, uh, so we give the liberty to our developers and users. Um, we, we, we start with a very limited uh, training set, and uh, at first we can recognize about uh, tens of 
concepts. And later on, uh, based on the feedbacks from users and the developers, we add more and more concepts. Uh, this is our API. It's uh, available online. Uh, uh, throughout the years, the accuracy and the features has grown uh, dramatically. For, for example, for face recognition, um, not only we can detect the location and orientation of the face very accurately, uh, we can also detect the landmarks and all sorts of uh, attributes. Uh, for example, age and gender, uh, happiness and beauty. Uh, we can even detect, uh, we recognize celebrities. And we have very uh, uh, thought out API functions that anyone can use to build their own data, data set, uh, both for face and for concept. Uh, beyond the API, we have uh, this graphic user interface. Uh, you don't need to be a developer or uh, you, don't need to, you don't need to know uh, how to program to use our backend. Uh, you just, or, or, or you just need to do is uh, drag some images into our platform and we'll, we'll automatically detect those faces and group them into uh, groups. And each group will contain the faces of the same person. Uh, our platform is not only uh, easy to use, but also highly scalable. Uh, in this example, a client of ours uh, created this website uh, that allows users to search for uh, copyrighted images. They use our API to index their multi-million, I mean, tens of million uh, copyrighted images. Uh, for example, if I upload an image of Daisy, uh, on the bottom, uh, I will get uh, the, the results, which are all the uh, images of daisies. By comparison, um, on the right, uh, you see the result from Google image search. Only one of the results are daisy. Uh, since the launch of our API, uh, we have got good tractions across different se sectors in the industry. Uh, now we have more than 6,000 uh, active developers uh, are using our API, um, including individual developers and as well as well-known corporations and companies. Uh, besides API, we create this uh, consumer-facing uh, product called PhotoTime. Uh, PhotoTime is a, it's an app that you can download the um, uh, App Store. Uh, later on, it will be available on Android Play Store. Uh, we have integrated many cool, cool stuff in there. Uh, for example, face, uh, face recognition and scene recognition. Later on, we'll add OCR, of course. Uh, we created this to help people find their personal photos. Uh, nowadays, we have, uh, you, you, you can easily have thousands of personal photos. Right? Uh, to find that one uh, you, you are looking for, is very, it's going to be very hard, uh, especially you have multi uh, multiple data sources. Uh, you, you upload images on Facebook, you, you upload uh, images on Twitter, but you, you cannot find it. So we, we create this app to solve this problem. Uh, to, to allow users to search across different platforms, we have integrated a lot of services. Uh, here is a short list. We are adding more. So it, those, those information help us to refine our keyword list. Um, so we, we are now in this cycle where uh, full-time users uh, teach us what, what to learn. Uh, and, and in return, we refine our model and apply the new, uh, newest model to our uh, full-time app so that it will help our user to search uh, inside their personal photos faster. Uh, here's just a glimpse of uh, how well we have benefited from or those feedbacks from users. Uh, and here, uh, I'll show uh, some samples of the uh, keywords from where we started. As you can see, there are, uh, it is, doesn't make too, many, um, too much sense uh, because those keywords are rarely used. And here are the keywords we use now. 
Uh, I mean, oh, I'm sorry, this is only a, a sample bit. I cannot list them, them all. Uh, as, as you may notice, although these keywords might be simpler, uh, but uh, is, those are more common words. Maybe and those words are uh, mean uh, more to our users. Um, uh, refined keywords is one, and we uh, to to further improve the accuracy and uh, help us uh, help uh, the, you, our user to search in their images. We create this knowledge graph. The knowledge graph is basically the, is the relationship between uh, any two keywords. Uh, this is just a visualization of all the concepts that we can recognize. Uh, and if we zoom in to one spot, uh, you can see all, all, all those uh, keywords are related to bird. Uh, the, he, he, this node uh, is actually bird node, and he, all those uh, satellite nodes are a uh, subcategory of bird, a uh, certain type of bird, like a flock, um, kite bird. Or ego. Uh, to have this knowledge graph can help us can help us tremendously in our training process, because now we know okay a certain type of dog should not compete with dog or animal, but should compete uh, with cats. So it it will uh, increase the accuracy of training. Uh, th throughout the years the accuracy for our concept recognition has grown dramatically. Uh, if you have played our um, demos in 2012, it's the time when we launched our first concept recognition. Um, this is the result you will get uh, here. It's a very simple uh, result. It only uh, contain uh, three keywords uh, that is the best de describe that image. At that time, we can only detect um, uh, about 40 different type of scenes. And this is the screenshot that I made uh, last year. As you may notice, we, we can uh, recognize about uh, 3,000 kind of things. And, and this, uh, in the latest update, we have integrated this knowledge graph. Uh, not only we, we return you more tags, uh, but we return you the relationships. And to cope with this ever-growing da training data, we create the, uh, we adopted this uh, multi-GPU uh, boxes. We build these boxes by, by our own, uh, small and large. The largest one uh, contain uh, 16 GPUs. Uh, uh, by the time of, of finishing, uh, uh, to, to our best knowledge, we, we have the largest single multi-GPU uh, machine in, in, in the, on the Earth. But, but now, nowadays, it's quite common. Uh, this multi-GPU machine help us greatly uh, in reducing the, the turnaround time of training a new model. Uh, if we only train, uh, if we train our, uh, our model only one, on one GPU, uh, I, I have to wait for more than three months to, to uh, uh, to, to, to converge, uh, but now it only takes about six days, which is bearable. Okay, so uh, I think deep learning is 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 quite a hot, uh, quite hot topic right now, uh, and people try to apply deep learning in, in a lot of different scenarios. Uh, for example, uh, to, to me, uh, deep learning is uh, like a motor engine; you can put it in, in uh, anywhere. Uh, some people put it in the car, some they put it on the bike, maybe a overkill. Uh, somewhere put it in the places where it's not best suited. Can it help us to build a real intelligent machine? Uh, build something that can talk to me, communicate with me, and recognize me, uh, and pick me up here and, and uh, send me to the airport? Uh, probably not. And I think one of the, one of the major reasons why is the, the input and output is, of, of, of in the input output of the current generation of deep learning is uh, very constrained. It, it can do a very good job if the uh, problem is well defined. 
and our continuous integration of training is one stop. Oh, I think uh, our continuous integration of training is one step uh, towards the good, good direction. So it's 2015. Uh, we are still at the early stage of AI, uh, but we are not alone. Um, I, I'm more optimistic uh, now because uh, the task is not only on researchers and uh, on the scientists, but any, any user who use our full-time app and any developer who use our recognition platform can help uh, us greatly and, and can contribute to this great cause. That's all. Thank you.